Anatomy of an Illness by Norman Cousins. In 1964, after a trip to Moscow, the author suffered from a serious collagen illness. This is a disease of the connective tissue. He had problems moving his limbs and even turning over in bed. These nodules appeared on his body and gravel-like substances appeared under his skin. His diagnosis was ankylosing spondylitis, which meant the connective tissue in his spine was degenerating. While in the hospital, Cousins started to become skeptical of hospitals. He said, I had a fast-growing conviction that a hospital is no place for a person who is seriously ill. The surprising lack of respect for basic sanitation, the rapidity with which cocci and other pathogenic organisms can run through the entire hospital, the extensive and sometimes promiscuous use of x-ray equipment, the seemingly indiscriminate administration of tranquilizers and powerful painkillers, sometimes more for the convenience of hospital staff in managing patients than for therapeutic needs, and so forth. He believed that the hospital's most serious failure was in the area of nutrition. Their overuse of processed foods and preservatives, primarily. They use white bread with its chemical softeners and bleached flour and overcooked vegetables, even soggy vegetables as well. Cousins had to take his health into his own hands. He started by getting his adrenal glands functioning properly and restore homeostasis. He started by watching comedies. This gave him at least 10 minutes of belly laughter a day. The laughter would give him two hours of pain-free sleep. Next, he took 25 grams of intramuscular injections of vitamin C. That is a lot of vitamin C. By day eight, he was off drugs and sleeping pills. He was also able to move his limbs without pain. And the gravel-like nodules on his neck and the backs of his hands began to shrink. After his full recovery, what conclusions did Cousins learn from his experience? Well, he didn't accept the verdict the doctors gave him, and he took control of his own health. The will to live gave him the capacity to rejuvenate his body. He said that drugs are not always necessary. Belief in recovery always is. This was the result of the power of the placebo. He said the most successful prescriptions are those filled by the body itself. The placebo derives its power from the infinite capacity of the human mind for self-deception. The placebo triggers biochemical changes in the body. The human mind has the capacity to turn hope into a tangible and essential biochemical change. So you can change your body chemistry through your mind. The mind and body are connected, but oftentimes doctors seem to think that the body is just a machine, it's mechanical. But there's a connection between mind, body, and soul. Cousins said that death is not the ultimate tragedy of life. The ultimate tragedy is depersonalization, a person dying in some alien and sterile area, separated from the spiritual nourishment that comes from being able to reach out to a loving hand. And this person is often separated from a desire to experience the things that make life worth living. They are separated from hope. He said not every illness can be overcome, but many people allow illness to disfigure their lives more than it should. They cave in needlessly. I've known many people 
who just do exactly what their doctor tells them and they don't do anything on their own, these people seem to suffer the most. He also said the patient-physician relationship is important. Physicians who ignore the importance of the relationship with the sufferer are often those who possess a simple-minded philosophy about illness. That is, that illness is the enemy which he assaults with all the skill and technology at his command. Physicians need to be in actual touch with patients. Technology pushes the physician away from their patients. He said time is the one thing patients need most from their doctors. Time to be heard, time to have things explained, time to be reassured, time to be introduced by the doctor personally to specialists who may seem new and threatening to the patient. In summary, Cousins changed his way of thinking and this changed his body chemistry. He said patients are divided into two groups, those who are confident they will recover and lead normal lives again, and those who resign themselves to prolonged illness. He used the power of his mind to overcome his illness. And you or I can too. The mind has untapped power that most people never even tap into. So tap into it. Talk to you later. Bye.